In this video, I will explain the importance of diversification if you are thinking about building a dividend portfolio. I will also discuss 12 companies that might be considered when building such a portfolio. I've held all of these companies for many years. And finally, I will share with you some amazing results of how this portfolio has performed. Before I start, I do need to say that I'm not giving financial advice and you must always do your own research. OK, let's get into the video. The importance of diversification. When building a long term dividend portfolio of individual companies, diversification is crucial. If you have all your money in a single company and that company goes bust, you could lose everything. It's like having all your eggs in one basket. Many years ago, I only had three companies, Barclays, Lloyds and RBS. My money was spread over more than one company, but they were all in the banking sector. There was no diversification at all. Sometimes a whole sector runs into trouble, as in the last financial crisis, where many banks globally went bust. Not only do we want our portfolio to consist of companies in different sectors, but it is also beneficial that they operate in different regions of the world so your portfolio has global diversification also. Let's start building a diversified dividend portfolio. Most of my companies I like to buy are in the FTSE 100. That's the UK's largest companies. You might think that I'm not being diversified, but many of these large companies are global and earn money from all over the world. The FTSE 250 tends to be more UK based, so if all my companies were from the 250 index, then I might not be as well diversified. So here we go. Here is my diversified dividend portfolio dream team. I'll mention them in alphabetical order. Almost all of them are multinational companies giving you impressive global diversification, but also some good dividends. In the insurance sector, I would choose Aviva. Aviva is a multinational insurance company with 33 million customers, and Aviva currently pays a dividend of 5%. In the aerospace sector, I would choose BAE Systems. They are one of the world's largest defence companies and pay a dividend currently of about 4%. From the beverage sector, I would choose Diageo. Diageo operates in more than 180 countries. Its brands include Guinness and Diageo is the world's largest producer of Scotch whisky. The dividend is quite low at 2%, but they have a history of growing that dividend. From the pharmaceutical sector, I would choose GlaxoSmithKline. GSK is global and is the 10th largest pharmaceutical company in the world. It currently pays a reasonable dividend of 4%. A FTSE 250 company now in the energy production sector. Its name is Greencoat UK Wind. It's a British investment company which specialises in wind farms and pays about 5%. Whenever I'm driving in the countryside and see those blades spinning around, I can almost hear the sound of money being made out of thin air, and it's a wonderful sound. From the banking sector, I would choose HSBC. It's a multinational investment bank and financial services company, and the second largest bank in Europe, and has a yield of 4%. In the infrastructure and utility sector, I'd go for National Grid. National Grid is an energy company which operates in the US and UK, delivering gas and electricity. The yield is good at 5%. Because of the growing demand for metals, I'll include a company in the mining sector, such as Rio Tinto. Rio is an Anglo-Australian multinational and is the world's second largest metals and mining corporation. The yield is high at 9%, but historically this company has done well. In the retail sector, Tesco makes its way into the portfolio. Tesco is the world's third largest retailer by gross revenue and is the market leader of groceries in the UK. Dividends are currently around 4%. In the oil and gas sector, you might consider Royal Dutch Shell. 
Shell is a British Dutch oil and gas super major and is one of the largest companies in the world, paying 5% dividends, but that is expected to grow as demand for oil picks up slowly. In the consumer sector, I would definitely include the multinational consumer goods company Unilever, which supplies products to over 190 countries. Nearly every household will probably have products made by Unilever. I'll shortly reveal some really impressive data concerning this portfolio, but first we've got one more. It is in the communication sector and it's Vodafone. Vodafone operates networks in 22 countries and joint networks in a further 48 countries. So here's a quick look again at those 12 companies I would choose if I was thinking about starting a diversified dividend portfolio and holding for the long term. Now, here is the really fascinating thing I wanted to tell you. Firstly, the average dividend yield of this portfolio is 4.7% and that beats the average yield of the FTSE 100, which is currently at 3.4%. And on top of this, the capital growth of the portfolio over the last 10 years is up on average 41% compared to the FTSE 100 of 21%. So here we have a diversified portfolio, which really does perform. If you have any questions or comments, then let me know. Thanks for watching.